So I am a relatively recent convert to the Wayland way of doing things. As you guys know, if you've watched my channel for any amount of time, you know that for the longest time I was very, very anti-Wayland. And it's only been recently, within the last three or four weeks, that I've actually switched full-time to Wayland. And while I have many thoughts on that transition, I've already made one video and I have another one that I'm kind of contemplating in my brain hole. I have overall been fairly happy with Wayland. I have had some issues with it, but I think for the most part, I am have, or at least I've talked about how I'm ready to say Wayland is ready for me as well as everybody else. So what I want to do today is talk about one of the key features or one of the key things you hear most when you hear people talk about Wayland, specifically when you hear people talk about Wayland compositors or Wayland window managers, which is what I like to call them. So when you hear people talk about these things, usually you hear them talked about in conjunction with something called a portal or an XDG portal. And if you don't know what the lingo means, you're probably quite confused. Like, what is a portal? Why do I need one? So that's the question we're going to try to answer today is what is a portal? Why do you need one? Why is it good? What is the benefits of using this system and why we're where we are as a community in terms of Wayland and portals and all that stuff? So we have a broad range of topics to choose from, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. So, so let's go ahead and talk about the main question. What is an XDG portal and why do you need one? Well, the answer to that question really lies in the way that Wayland has been built. Wayland itself and the compositors that are built on top of Wayland are all built with the idea that security is one of the primary concerns of the display stack. So this is in, in contrast to Xorg, which is this gigantic behemoth that controls basically everything outside of System D, and it if it displays on the screen, Xorg is in control of it. Whereas with Wayland, as I understand it, it's much more containerized. Now, when we talk about containers, things get awful confusing because there's many different types of containers. And even in the realm of containers, oftentimes the word container doesn't mean what you think it means. So explaining what containers mean is kind of hard. And because it can mean different things and it also... Just because something is containerized or sandboxed, if you will, doesn't necessarily mean that it has no access outside of that sandbox, which is, to me, very weird because the idea of something being sandboxed or containerized kind of implies the, you know, security of it being, you know, contained or sandboxed. If it's not actually sandboxed, then it shouldn't be, you shouldn't use the word. Words actually have meaning, but that's beside the point. But the point of Wayland, is just to kind of get back on the point, is that everything that runs and is displayed on the system through the Wayland protocols and all the stuff that goes along with it are sandboxed together. They cannot talk, at least in general, to each other at all. That's the whole point of the way they have sandboxed every application in terms of display and user interaction. So, for example, in your browser, when you want to upload a file. The first thing you do on Xorg, or the first thing you see on an Xorg is a file picker. That's the thing that you, you know, you. it's basically a file manager, but it's used for specifically choosing a file to upload or save. On Xorg, oftentimes that file picker, or at least in the past, oftentimes that file picker was attached to the individual applications. So you'll see this a lot with specific types of applications, things like GIMP, they have their own file chooser. It, things like Firefox oftentimes would have two different file choosers depending on which desktop environment you're in. So it would have a Qt file picker or it would have a GTK file picker. You get the idea, right? Each application would be in full control of what that file picker looked like and oftentimes it was contained with the application itself, right? So it had control over everything that the file chooser had access to, which usually included all of your files. So that interaction basically between two different applications is what Wayland was trying to prohibit when they came up with the system or when they designed the Wayland system, right? At least as I understand it. And it's not just pickers that have to do with this thing. Things like screenshots, screen sharing, things like access to network status, all that stuff is stuff that happens outside of an application that an application oftentimes needs access to 
but in Wayland can't because in Wayland applications can't access outside of their sandbox. So their solution was to create different portals. And basically each desktop environment in Wayland Compositor basically has created their own portal, which gives access from an application to a system level service or action. So for example, if you want to do screen sharing inside of OBS, by itself without a portal on Wayland, OBS cannot do screen sharing or screen capturing at all. It just can't be done, okay? Because OBS is sandboxed. With a portal, basically it is a bridge between OBS and those system level functions allowing things like screen capturing. So you install something like the XDG portal for KDE or GNOME or Hyperland or whatever, and that runs as a system service in the background, basically allowing any application which is sandboxed to access the features that those portals provide. So things like screen sharing, things like net network access, things like a file chooser, all that stuff, right? So basically, to boil it all down, a portal is simply a bridge between an application on Wayland and an underlying suite of services that allow it to do certain things like file picking, like screen capturing, and so on. So I hope that I explained that fairly reasonably. And I will also just note here that I'm a very much a, a Wayland noob. So I'm trying to explain this from a noob's perspective because I am one, I are one. And just if I got anything completely wrong, I'll try to correct it in the comment section below, I'm sure. Someone will correct me if I'm absolutely wrong in the comments below as well. So uh, that happens. So that's basically what a portal is. And, and it kind of goes a long way towards explaining why they're needed. Because without them, applications on Wayland do not have access to any of those services or capabilities that they would normally have on Xorg. Things like screen sharing, file choosing, all that stuff, right? So the portals are what enable applications to function and communicate with other services and applications. So... Without them, Wayland would be not as useful. So with all that said, let's then talk about my opinion on portals, just because I can't do a video without me talking about my opinion on, on Wayland or portals or whatever. So earlier in the video, I talked about how Wayland was basically ready for me. And I think that I am at that case. I've, I've made a video about it recently. I don't need to rehash all the reasons why I've switched, why I thought now was the time, all that stuff. But... What I want to talk about instead is that there is one part of the Wayland ecosystem, if you will, that still doesn't feel quite ready. And of course, I'm talking about portals. So I have been using Wayland now for about three weeks and I'm using Hyperland. So if I actually show you my Hyperland desktop, this is Hyperland here, and I've been using this now for about three weeks. It's a very good window manager. It's a very good Wayland compositor, if that's the words you want to use to, to describe it. I've It's a very good experience. Uh, I've had very good interactions with a developer. I've ha had bugs that I've submitted and had fixed almost immediately, which is just unheard of in a project this big. So I've had a, a very good time with Hyperland, but you've probably also heard me talk about some things where I've been unhappy, mainly when it comes to actually having my screen captured in OBS. That's where I have been having the most problems. And all of that surrounds, all of the problems that I've had are directly associated with the portal itself. So I can't actually show you this because it's working right now. But if you watch the previous podcast, you'll know that twice the screen capture that I was using to capture Tyler on the podcast froze. And I had to restart the portal and basically set it up to, from the beginning in order to actually get it to work. It froze twice. I've also had this weird issue where the first time I open up o OBS for the day, it will bring up the little picker for which screen I want to capture, which is the way it's supposed to work. And I select the main monitor, which is the one that I almost always want to capture because it's, you know, right in front of me. But for whatever reason, it won't capture that monitor right away. It'll capture the other two monitors for, for whatever reason. It does fine with two, won't do anything on the third. I have to restart the portal in order for it to capture that monitor. It's really weird. So my point here isn't to complain about the developers or the development of the portals. It's just that for some reason, oftentimes when you do have issues on Wayland, chances are the thing that's causing those problems, at least in terms of Wayland compositors at least, is the portal, the portal that you're using. And 
I think that oftentimes the reason why that's the case is because the portals are moving targets that are being developed as they go along. So not only do they have to deal with changes inside of Wayland and the compositor, they also have to deal with changes on the applications part. So when OBS changes something really weird, the compositor has to change in order to accommodate those changes. So all these moving pieces sometimes leads to bugs. It's the way things go basically with anything, so it's not that surprising. But I think that overall my experience has been brought down a little bit because of the bugs that are still in the portal system. But my experience isn't the norm for most people because I capture the screen a lot more than most people do. I mean, some people take a lot of screenshots. Most people don't make a ton of YouTube videos. <laughs> That's just not a normal thing that people do. So my experience with OBS and with certain parts of the portal are going to be different than everybody else's. And from what I've heard from most people, they usually don't interact with the portal outside of a file picker. So as long as the file picker works, which it almost certainly always does, they're not going to have any problems with the portal. Whereas I, because I interact with it in different ways than most people do, I'm going to kind of see where some of the bugs still kind of lie. So I hope that I did a fairly good job of explaining what a portal is. And if you still have questions, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'm sure there are technical de details that are beyond me that someone else can explain, but I'll still try to answer questions if you have them in the, in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi or uh, as a YouTube member via the button down below my face. You can also find all of my merch over at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find hats and t-shirts and desk mats and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly to help me make more Linux content. So if you would be so kind as to head over there, shop.thelinuxcast.org, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I again, truly do appreciate it. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.